Hello everybody and welcome back to brand new Dead Overflow video. My name is Dead Overflow and before we get started, please make sure to subscribe. We're trying to hit 60,000, so please make sure to help him out. Also, check out my Android API hacking course, which is like 95% off for like the next four days. Also, check out my bug bounty course, which is actually half the price for the next two days, as well as my game hacking course. They all actually give you access to my premium platform forever. If you get them, even if you cancel the subscription, game hacking course also gives you some example cheats. Android app, Android app hacking course actually is the best one in my opinion. So check them all three out. Links are in the description. Now let's go with today's video. So you might actually remember this from the last episode, what we have actually done in terms of research. Uh, and we have stopped uh, researching right here, where we find out that you can actually open tabs with curl. Now, if you're new here, I recommend you watch the video, which is going to be right around here somewhere in the top right corner. But I will actually definitely show you what I mean. So if I run curl and I specify HTTP, you know, my local host or actually the website which I'm trying to reach, uh, and I hit enter, you can see what happens is after a few seconds, you should see a cold Chrome window. Oh my God, what the hell? I, is my server even running? Ah, man, I'm just so bad at spelling stuff. I even noticed it from my last video. I don't know what's going on, but anyways. So as you can see, uh, we, we can see that it actually takes the current Chrome context and it opens up a whole new tab just by running curl. Now, that was really interesting to me. However, you might actually already know that there are some hidden hosting schemes, like schemes on Windows, which allows you to open programs from this actual window. So for example, if I if I actually, uh, hold on, let me show you that first of all in the Chrome. Uh, if I open up a new tab and type calculator and type two dots like this, and I click on this blue thing right here or click enter, whatever, it will ask you, hey, do you want to open calculator? And this is a security feature. It has to ask you, do you want to open this application? And once you click the button, it obviously will open up the calculator. Now that is pretty awesome. However, what you can see here is if I type calculator and type two dots and run here, curl, enter, uh, hold on, I actually have to reset the server because I forgot to turn on the debug. Now let's actually try to do it. So as you can see, we see the calculator pop up. That is pretty amazing. So now that you understand that, you might be wondering where can you find these host schemes like calculator or something else like HTTP is just a scheme defined by Windows to actually handle stuff in the browser. But where are these things defined? That is a good question. And actually, I do know where they are. They are actually in the registry editor. If you go open, you go to computer, H key classes root, you can find stuff here. And if you scroll enough down on the letter C, you might see calculator is actually defined. And you can find much more like CapCut. I don't know why, but you can apparently open editing software from literally this. And that actually made me interested. I decided to actually start digging through this and understanding what actually is going on. So for example, there's CSGO because I play Counter-Strike and apparently that exists. So that is pretty insane in my opinion. Uh, there's CSC, I don't know, I do not know what that is, but if you see the value is not set, that means nothing can actually occur. Uh, if you see anything that ends with a file, uh, it's nothing to be interested in. There is the device, not set. Okay, so you actually have to see the Discord. Look at that, we can open up Discord. That is pretty amazing. Driver Easy apparently also runs this, okay. So anything that ends with a file is not really important. And I want to encourage you to help me out in figuring out what can we do. So after a bit of research and after a bit of digging, you can also see face it if you play face it and face it uh, anti-cheat. So that's pretty cool. But after a bit of digging, I realized that on the letter J, hold on, let me scroll, scroll to letter J, you can see JNLP and JNLPS protocols. These are very important. Why do I mean these are very important? Well, they're very important for today's video to be exact. If you didn't know, JNLP can be actual application within Windows that can run a jar file from, for example, an external host or another website. So what I have done is a very simple test. I wanted to see whether this works or not. So I created a static folder and I created a test.java file. This file will just create a frame which will say hello and there will be a text inside of that frame which will say hello from java it is a very simple ui and the class name is obviously test 
And this is a test.jnlp file, which is important. Uh, as you can see right over here, uh, you can see what actually happens. So I attach the code base, which was going to be the static folder from which it's going to take the test.jar file. How I compiled it? Well, it's very simple. You firstly have to turn the Java file to cl the class file with Java C binary and then from that you can turn it into test.jar pretty easily but once you have this test.jar from the test.java you actually go over here to test.jnlp you put it right over here uh, and yeah you have to obviously define also the main class because the program needs to know where to run so i made this very simple literally the simplest application or jnlp application to see whether this will actually work and funny enough let's now actually do it here so you actually have to say jnlp and then you have to specify URL, which is going to be localhost, obviously the port or any website you actually have, slash static, slash test.jnlp. That is it. So after I've done that, let me reset the server just in case I actually messed something up or I didn't reset it properly. Now let's run curl on just the localhost, which will obviously render the home html which will try to open this jnlp file so download it cache it and open it so let's see whether that will work so let's click enter and would you see that java actually opens no warning however there is a security warning which tells you do you want to run this application and you must say run for it to actually run but still there are getting very close to having this actually be an RCE. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out some protocols right now which are available. And that is actually what I've done for the past few days. Found this one, you know, it, it was definitely hard to figure out which Java runtime version and Java development kit version to use to, for, for them to actually be compatible with all of this. But yeah, this is actually definitely an interesting behavior which we have found. And, and I believe you guys as an audience could also help me out figure out more stuff because currently we can run JNLP applications from an external host with just curl with no actual warnings attached. Because if you try to run this from a Chrome browser, it is still possible. However, it will ask you to open up the web launcher, which then obviously will run this, but you still need to click a button. Whereas just running curl you know doesn't actually do that you just run curl and obviously it skips that whole part because that part is a part of the browser security not actually you know windows security to be fair but it, it should ask you still i don't know why it skips that part i guess when it actually calls the invoke web request it just kind of silently ignores this but anyways uh we can run it and boom but what you see right now is not really exploitable and don't worry youtube this is very ethical and i'm encouraging my viewers to maybe help me find out a bug which we can report to windows but right now this is sandboxed as hell the reason why i put this hello from java and not uh, just run calculator from the java which would be very possible to just to spawn a new process which will be calculator is because it's impossible to do it because this needs this jar file needs to be signed with a valid or trusted certificate which the operating system will trust that is definitely a security feature. However, you can still play with this and create UIs, but this is where I'm stuck currently. So if you know anything about Windows, you want to contribute to this, hit me up on Discord or email. We can definitely work this out. I have another researcher with me, which is very, more, very much working with me. And it was actually the researcher who initially found this odd behavior in Curl. And you know, you should check it out. You check it out his profile on Hacker One, which is in the description or the report he reported, he sent to actual Curl. But just so you know, Curl, lib curl and curl that powershell uses is not the same curl i don't know why did they actually use this but th that is besides the point so there you go make sure to be ethical and responsible with this thank you so much for watching this video stay safe stay responsible and as always peace